associates and we're always looking to like collaborate with like you know like-minded individuals especially those in the industry because we just feel as if as an interior designer your company has so much to offer so feel free to tell me a little bit more about your company right so my company is called i love this place and i came up with this name because that's literally what i wanted people to say and feel when they walk into a space that I've created which is I love this place it's something that I say all the time when I walk somewhere I like um and so I started my company and I wanted to do interior design from the perspective of perspective of mental health where I create interiors that not only look good but they're also good for you and this stemmed from my own personal experience when I dealt with mental health issues and I was at the lowest of the low and I realized how my environment and changing my environment around me, my immediate built environment, helped me heal and helped me get out of bed and helped me go throughout the house and gave me purpose. And then when lockdown hit, again, I was stuck in the house and I thought, God, you know, I like what I see and thank God for that. And that is helping me get through this. So it's something that I just wanted to share with others. Um, and just make sure they realize that, you know, there's so many things we can't control in this life. We can't control what others do. We can't control the weather. We can't control so many millions of things. But most of us have at least a little bit of control when it comes to our personal space, our homes, our interiors, mm-hmm. even if it's just a little bit. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It, it's, you know, what I really like about this conversation is the fact that your company was literally grew out of a situation that required a need and a solution, you know, so the fact that you're trying to create something that, you know, uh, orbits around inclusive design, this is something that really, you know, it's very sentimental to me especially due to the fact that we work in various community centres, early year schools, and also various schools and, you know, hospitality projects. It just means that you're engaging with individuals that have a priority of creating some sort of inclusive design that is sustainable. And, you know, we need more individuals like this. This is why, you know, having a conversation with yourself, it's just meaningful but tell me a little bit more about like say little strategies that you utilize in order to you know uh, put together your design you know so the public especially on this podcast will be able to hear a little bit more about you yeah no I always start any consultation with asking people how they want to feel in the space and what are their needs from an emotional level you know there are some people who get really stressed they have such stressful jobs they want to come home and just feel like you know, when you walk in your home and you just exhale and you're like, oh, um, I'm home. That's a magical feeling. And sometimes you don't have that. And I ask them, okay, you you want to feel that. Why do you feel you don't have that? What's the first thing you see when you walk through the door? When you put that key in the door and you open the door, what's the first thing you see? That's such a powerful question. You know, very powerful question like some people are ob- ob- sometimes obsessed with the destination, but sometimes with architectural design. It's about the journey to get to that destination and the experiences that people feel along the way. That sometimes is more meaningful than the actual place they need to go. Don't get me wrong, destination is great, but the journey is as important, you know. So, yeah, feel free to tell me more about some of your strategies in regards to that. A hundred percent. I think you can't get to your destination properly you're not going to get where you want to get to if you don't think about the journey and this is an exercise that I ask you know it's my strategy if you will the exercise that I ask clients to do in your own time at home literally just close your eyes and do an imaginary tour of your house from the second you walk in and you go through every room or from the second you wake up what do you see and just think of consciously think about all the things that you see and how they make you feel because sometimes you know we have this I don't know this feature wall that we inherited with the house and we actually we don't really like it but whatever it's there we just leave it we can't be bothered to change it but that every day is annoying you it just becomes such such an ingrained part of your daily home experience that you think oh I'm just gonna put up with it but change it you know it's bothering you put it on the list what else walk to the next room how do you feel in here how would you like to feel and then once we go through all of these things we come up together with solutions for all of the all of them so you walk in your hallway and it's messy it makes you feel agitated what do you have 
a red feature wall and shoes all over the place. Okay, so we need to change these colors. We need to find storage solutions that people will actually proactively use them and want to use them because they're easy. Okay, what's the next thing? You walk into your kitchen. Do you feel like it's not easy for you? Get annoyed because you have nowhere to put your bags and you just leave them on the floor, but it's annoying that they're on the floor. It's just walking through and consciously thinking about your home and how you feel using your home. Like what's the user experience in your own home? Because that's what makes you feel in a certain way and then it makes you behave in a certain way. And then I also ask people, you know, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? And does your home help you become that person, you know? You might want to be someone who exercises. I want to exercise every day. But okay, where's your yoga mat? Do you have access to it? Is it some you have a designated corner that it's easy to get to, your stuff is there, and you can just get straight on it? Or is it somewhere on top of a cupboard in the back with bags in the front? This is it. All of these things. But you know, it's very interesting. Sometimes a lot of clients, they just need to be asked the right type of questions in order to get the right type of response. And sometimes it's almost like trying to create some sort of like map, like roadmap from A to B with various with a series of questions that allows them to literally, you know, progress the project in a seamless manner. And yeah. at the same time, these questions, these series of questions, they assist the client to almost feel as if they are part of that journey, you know? So for us, you know, as, as an architectural practice, we don't like to assume that we know everything. We like to ask those, those important questions just to tease out some of those nuances, you know, get an understanding of, say, for example, if it's like a couple, what's the relationship like? What do you like? How do you experience the space? And then go to the other person and ask them, how do they experience the space? And then because they may not have actually had that conversation, you know, and then suddenly there's a surprise when we start going through some sort of like look and feel in the design and they've got two different narratives rather than an immersive approach. OK, so we've had many scenarios whereby we've talked to one partner and they've talked about how they would really like to engage with the children in a very particular way. You know, be able to see what the children are laughing at around the corner of some of these, uh, you know, exhibition spaces or some of these, you know, say theatre rooms or in-house cinemas and things like that. It's all about the experience, isn't it? It's Absolutely. everybody's experience is different from the next clientele, you know, and that is one thing that we really like to hang our hats on. And we like to be known for listening. You know, we have a saying, we, we don't like to assume a thing. We like to digest, listen, and then find out how we can work to your parameters. And, you know, from there, create a meaningful design, you know, that has limited amount of surprises, you know, because nobody likes surprises and mm. a true value for what they're trying to really, you know, try to get some sort of like true value of what the, their true vision of what they're trying to aim for. So yeah, they, I, you know, um, with that said, because we're gonna have to wrap up soon, but what we will do, what we will do, here's your window of opportunity. Feel free to tell the audience a little bit about your company, where to find you, you know, and you know this is your moment feel free to tell them perfect. where can they find perfect. You? right so my company is called i love this place my website is i love this place designs.com i'm on instagram i love this place by reluca which is my name and i'm all about creating interiors that are not only good to look at but they're also good for you and help you become the person you want to be excellent i can't express that was well said so if anybody wants to reach out to Raluca you know feel free to get in touch with AGA Associates you know we're more than happy to make recommendations of her fabulous work that she has done and you know what we would love to have her again so Raluca feel free to give them a wave goodbye thank and, you um, you know it's been an absolute pleasure okay likewise thank you all right thank you